Life's ability to adapt to the most unusual environments is something I'm quite a fan of, and several animals have adapted to live solely in deep caves where light and the sun that we are familiar with never shines. These animals are known as troglofauna, or troglobites, and one of these troglobites that we're going to look at today is the Olm. Yep, that's right. This week, we're going to double up on salamander videos and cover the European cave noodle. Now, before I explain what these little dudes are, it's best to look at their environment and see how they came to be. Beneath the Dineric Alps of southeastern Europe, there are an extensive network of limestone caves, sinkholes, and underground rivers. The waters of these caves are rich in minerals and are quite cold, sitting between 5 and 15 degrees Celsius, or 41 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit. And over the span of millions of years, some estimates going all the way back to the Cretaceous period, as these caves were carved out and connected by the flow of water, life began to fill in the empty spaces, adapting to specialize to the dark and cold world that lies beneath the Balkans. Several crustaceans, insects, snails, and fish have adapted to live in these cave environments, and another animal that tends to fall down into caves quite a bit and do quite fine for themselves is salamanders. And one salamander, ages ago, would evolve over the span of millions of years to become a creature that sparsely resembles any salamander you could think of. Olms are pale, slender cave dwellers with an otherworldly appearance, closer resembling a sperm cell than a salamander. Olms tend to range from about 8 to 12 inches in length, making them among the largest troglobites and the apex predators of their environment. Olms retain their gills into adulthood, but one thing they don't retain into adulthood are eyes, as they tend to become covered by the skin. Basically what happens is their eyelids fuse shut, as they're not really that important in an environment that is permanently black. But what they do lack in sight, they more than make up for in hearing and smell, utilizing extremely sharp senses to hunt the minuscule and sparse prey of the underground. Olms also have some odd little hands, as their front legs have three fingies and their hind limbs only have two toes. Olms also sometimes disturbingly being referred to as human fish due to their pale skin, which tends to be whitish pink or yellow in coloration due to them not really needing bright colors to fend off a prey as, well, Shane ain't even going to see if they could kill it. Despite this, they actually do possess the ability to produce melanin, becoming darker in appearance when exposed to light, as some olms are known to wind up on the surface, either curiously venturing into the entrance of caves, as some olms in northern Italy have been spotted doing, and just from caves being flooded and them winding up on the surface. Flooding in a cave in Slovenia following some heavy rainfall in the 1680s resulted in the Olm's first documented sighting in the glory of the Duchy of Carniola, with them being thought to be the babies of great dragons that were said to inhabit the caves of Europe. Those familiar with RuneScape may remember the Great Olm Raid Boss, which is a large dragon that players fought at the bottom of a cave. And although Olms, as we know them today, aren't dragons, they do possess some wild-ass abilities that makes you question if they actually are magical creatures or not. For starters, they are salamanders, meaning they possess an extremely strong healing factor, being able to regrow entire limbs. And uh, Olms can live for, get this, over a hundred years. That's right, these cave noodles can live over a hundred years long with an average life expectancy of 68.5 years which isn't too far off from the global human average and to better adapt to these harsh cave ecosystems olms can survive for up to 10 years between meals this is due to them storing nutrients from their food in their liver stretching their reserves as thin as they possibly can while slowing down their metabolism to an insane degree 
slowly picking away at their long-consumed meal while even digesting bits of itself if necessary. The extremely long lifespan of these little guys may seem great on paper, but it ultimately has contributed to one of a few factors that makes them a vulnerable species. This is due to them not reproducing often, and on top of that, it takes ohms between 12 and 15 years to reach sexual maturity. An interesting habit of the ohm is that they can choose to give birth or to lie eggs on rock sides, depending on the circumstances, with the eggs uh, tending to be the highest yield of baby ohms in comparison to the live birth with females laying up to 70 eggs, and I believe if they give a live birth, it's around like 20. It all depends on the circumstances and the pressures that would cause it to do either or. But ohms will hatch and will remain in their larval state their whole lives, meaning they'll have those gills and they'll pretty much be the same, they'll just get bigger. And when they're sexually mature, they'll do that, similar to other specialized aquatic salamander species like axolotls. Now, the descriptions I've given so far are of the common ulm, but there is a single subspecies of the ulm. Meet the ulm's black cousin, the black ulm, a rare ulm only found in the caves under the Ternomo region of Slovenia. Black ulms are pretty similar to ulms, apart from being a little bit smaller, along with a few very noticeable differences. The most notable difference is its dark brown to black skin, which, combined with its rarity, makes it seem kind of like a shiny Pokemon. Black Olms have also retained their eyes, with them possessing limited yet functional vision, allowing them potential leeway in brighter areas of caves. The Black Olm also lives alongside other common Olms that inhabit that cave system, making it a very interesting subspecies to study as black ohms are a great look into the evolutionary process of the cave ecosystem, with two populations of the same ecosystem in the same habitat handling environmental pressures in a different way. Now, as mentioned earlier, ohms are listed as a vulnerable species, and the black ohm subspecies is even at higher risk due to its rarity. Even though most people will Ne live never knowing about the underground ecosystems that these ohms inhabit, groundwater pollution from pesticides and fertilizers can greatly disrupt their environments. Ohms and the species they rely upon require pretty specific environments to live in. Even seemingly minor factors like minuscule temperature raises of the water and even the quality of the water itself can disrupt the cave ecosystem to the point of complete extinction. Seemingly normal water from a river that we'd assume would be no different from the water of a cave could be extremely harmful to an ulm. Thankfully, both ulm subspecies are protected subspecies in the regions they inhabit, and efforts are made to keep their vulnerable cave ecosystem safe. Scientists have even been trying to keep these ulms safe since the 50s with a man-made cave ecosystem in Morlaix, France, being set up as a sanctuary for ohms, and it has been the only successful ohm breeding program, with over 400 ohms now calling that sanctuary home. Now, ohms are far from being the only cave dwelling salamanders, as both salamanders and caves are pretty common around the world, and many different salamanders have evolved to differing capacities depending on how reliant they are around the caves. You can probably go ahead and assume that the Olms are the most well adapted to caves under the Balkans, and you'd be correct. And one of the lesser specialized cave salamanders would be ironically referred to as the cave salamander, but more commonly being known as the spotted tailed salamander. Spotted tailed salamanders, as their alternative names imply, are known to live in caves on the eastern half of America, but are also known to be quite common just about everywhere else, living in the American wilderness. And if you live on the eastern side of the Mississippi, chances are you've seen one of these little dudes around here at some point. And although these salamanders are known to chill in caves, they are not specialists designed for the environment. 
just kind of being able to live anywhere, undergoing common salamander evolution Pokemon style, maintaining bright coloration in order to deter prey, and maintaining a standard salamander body plan, and maintaining its sense of vision. These salamanders would be considered subtroglophiles, and troglophile sounds really bad, but it's just a term to describe animals that are known to visit caves but aren't dependent on them to live, in the case of subtroglophiles, and show little to no adaptations that would allow them to live in a cave permanently, at least in the deeper ranges. The long-tailed salamander, which is a common salamander that lives in the Appalachian wilderness that frequents the springs, forests, and caves of the region. Unlike the spotted-tailed salamanders, the long-tailed salamanders are known to thrive deeper into caves, being able to survive in and out of these caves. This salamander would be an example of just a troglophile, being able to thrive in and out of the cave. And in the case of the Olm and a few other salamanders that we're going to look at, they fall under the category of troglobites, which means they have evolved specifically to live in cave environments. And when looking at grotto salamanders, you can definitely start to see the adaptations far more similarly to that of the Ohm. The Ozark Blind Salamander in particular has evolved the most out of the other grotto salamanders in order to live in caves, with pale skin and permanently shut eyes becoming blind in the dark cave environments, where they feast on several cave critters and guano, or, to those who don't know, batshit. And on salamanders, that might even mistake for an Ulm at the first glance. There is the Texas Blind Salamander. Equipped with pale skin, blind, sealed eyes, and living their lives in the larval form in the underground waterways of Texas, salamanders like the Texas Blind Salamander, in complete isolation from the Ulms and the other salamanders of Europe, have evolved to closely resemble the Ulm with them coming closer and closer to becoming the North American Olm. Maybe a few million years down the line, they will just be the same as an Olm. Unfortunately for them, though, they face the same risks that the Olms of Europe face, with groundwater pollution and changes in bat population as well, disrupting many of these cave ecosystems leaving many of these isolated amphibians and many more to be critically endangered. But there is hope, as just like the Olms of Europe, conservationists have been able to save these underwater worlds from devastation through similar uh, protected species stuff and different bills and pollution laws and able to you know, get this all under check. Make sure that the caves of the underground aren't all radioactive and glowing and whatnot. The world of cave ecosystems is truly an interesting environment where life found a way to live without any sun at all. And in this world, creatures as simple as salamanders can evolve into apex predators that can outlive humans. In a way, the Europeans were right about mythical creatures living on, in the extensive caves below, but they weren't fire-breathing dragons, that we know of at least. But I'll take the regenerating cave noodles over nothing any day of the week. The fragility of these ecosystems cannot be understated, though, as something as simple as water from the surface could wash away these magical, untouched worlds. Thankfully, Proper care and awareness can save these worlds from being flushed down the toilet. And that's going to do it for the Ulm. Thank you all for watching. This has been a very interesting little animal to research. I didn't know a lot of the facts about the Ulm. I just knew, okay, it's a cool creature, and they live in a pretty unique environment. Let's look this up. And I did not know they have lived that long in particular. That really surprised me. And a couple of the other fun facts, too, that were very interesting. But I'd like to thank you all for watching. Uploads might slow down. Um, the Monday videos should probably be, you know, like, the, I think you're always going to get a Monday video. But Thursday videos might take a break. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what goes on. But anyways, if you like the video, make sure to like it. Comment down below what you thought about it. What recommendations do you have? And hype the video. I'm going to keep saying that until they add it. 
But anyways, yeah, see you later. And as always, see you in the next one.